नमस्ते वी हियर डिस्कशन अबाउट सी ए ए सिटीजनशिप अमेंडमेंट एक्ट विच इज मेड फॉर द परसिक्यूटेड माइनॉरिटीज इन द नेबरिंग कंट्रीज अमंग दिन द लार्ज नंबर यू नो वेदर हिंदूज और सिक्स इवन बुद्धिस्ट सम नंबर आर यू नो क्रिश्चियंस यू नो दीज आर द पीपल हु कम ओवर टू इंडिया एंड वेटिंग फॉर गेटिंग देयर सिटीजनशिप राइट्स so uh, today we have with us uh, shri uh, uh, kiran chakapalli he he has been working through two different organizations uh, one was specifically meant for the tribal communities uh, which he started as think peace and then uh, uh, another one which is called as the refugee aid project so 92 camps uh, now refugee aid project uh is is running in various parts of india for the hindu refugees who have migrated either from sri lanka or bangladesh or pakistan so uh we have with us uh, uh kiran himself today so let us discuss and understand what are the dynamics involved in the persecution of these communities and their issues on the ground after migrating to bharat Thank you so much, Prafulji, for, uh, for hosting me. I was I was looking forward to you know for this important discussion. And you being a international relations student, mm-hmm. there cannot be a better person where you know I can discuss this issue with. Mm-hmm. And uh, Think Peace uh, organization was started with a single motto: to find areas where there is negligence in terms of government reaching out, mm-hmm. or there is kind of a dark mm-hmm. dark space. Like you know, there none of our organizations were working. because there was a lot of uh, you know left uh, extremism that was in that area tribal area mm-hmm. so i wanted to go there live uh, live there and also i have i've learned lot of vedas and upanishads uh, so i wanted to apply myself whatever spirituality or knowledge i've learned mm-hmm. through vedas i wanted to apply it as a young man mm-hmm. so that's how i chose that area i lived with people mm-hmm. i've learned how to listen to them rather than telling them with moral superiority and over time we have developed schooling and education so that project now is a sustainable project mm-hmm. our idea again you know in upanishads we are very clearly taught on how whatever we are working on mm-hmm. that area should not need us after a point of time mm-hmm. only when we are successful mm-hmm. so that area is successful i have learned and then built a very good network on my own through you know different channels after that uh, i was looking for something on a national platform mm-hmm. uh, something more powerful and important for the country and for our people mm-hmm. and that is when i came across the hindu refugee situation mm-hmm. i have come to few camps understood it and then i've realized it is very deep mm-hmm. and there is no voice for it mm-hmm. so hence i have taken up uh, something called bharat refugee yatra mm-hmm. starting from kanyakumari to kanyakumari Mm-hmm. i went to each and every every refugee hindu refugee camp mm-hmm. starting from elam tamils in kanyakumari mm-hmm. to hindu refugees from pakistan and bangladesh across bharat mm-hmm. and there i have documented our problems mm-hmm. and then i have realized that we need a human right organization uh, where we restore the dignity mm-hmm. and foster the resilience mm-hmm. of displaced hindu brothers and sisters mm-hmm. so that is how the birth of refugee project happened mm-hmm. and ever since we have been serving our people with an utmost honor great and now now tell me when when you are talking about the tamil refugees uh, the elam refugees coming from sri lanka or uh, the chakma refugees coming from bangladesh correct. and the hindu refugees coming from uh, pakistan correct now let us start with pakistan because that is a very peculiar case correct uh, uh, you know in the the entire sindh region especially the uh, districts like tharparkar where correct. there was a substantial hindu population even true. at the time of partition true Uh, now it has uh, reduced uh, drastically and every day they are facing you know some kind of religious persecution absolutely so now you work among these people uh, you uh, understand their issues you uh, uh, you know so what what do you find are uh, you know all these issues same or they have a different kind of degree and uh, uh, you know and and how should we Uh, see them how should we uh, project them to the people see persecution is same in everyone's case mm-hmm. you know be it elam tamil brothers sisters be it chakma hajong community or the pakistani hindus or anyone in, in that on that for that fact but uh, the way we handle it is so different unfortunately like elam tamils for example we have a separate rehabilitation department under ministry of external affairs mm-hmm. that have been serving them 
they rightfully deserve it mm. there is no doubt about it hence our country is doing it very very powerfully mm. so there the rehabilitation program is in place mm. and uh, while i was spending time with them i realized that many of them actually wants to go back to jaffna and resettle mm. because everything have settled and hopefully our country will do that mm. because that jaffna is a very uh, important juncture for us mm. where it is hardly 13 14 kilometers from rameshwaram mm. so having hindus there is always you know safe and nilam tamil there is better for the country is what is my personal opinion and when it comes to chakma hajam community it is us they were the most loyal community of bharat without being in bharat during mm-hmm. the partition mm-hmm. when they were there they were always raising in bharat flag mm-hmm. back then also mm-hmm. hence they wanted them to be out mm-hmm. and then the kaptai dam they were uh, you know they were taken for a ride by giving wrong promises and then it is our own country that have brought them to bharat mm-hmm. have given them refugee status mm-hmm. and then made them stay in arunachal pradesh mm-hmm. and tripura and all tripura and all they are fine but in arunachal pradesh it is very peculiar because they have they were given refugee status uh and in then in nefa in nefa not, they, not in arunachal not, not in arunachal pradesh exactly so they were actually when they resettled there it was mm-hmm. nefa mm-hmm. it was never arunachal pradesh but in 1976 when arunachal pradesh formed within 2 3 years there was a nara against the uh, chakma hajam community so then they were taken the refugee status back and since then to now it's over 50 years the community is neither refugees neither citizenships they are absolutely stateless mm-hmm. yeah so that is a very different issue that they are going through uh, and arunachal pradesh i think especially after 2014 we have developed amazing roads mm-hmm. i was like i was mentioning uh, earlier that i have done iron man in new zealand mm-hmm. uh, during that time there was one of the beautiful roads and for me arunachal was beautiful than that mm-hmm. that is how much even the border connectivity we have developed you know in order to counter chinese aggression i guess is unbelievable but the moment you enter a chakma hajong camp you will understand mm-hmm. that there is negligence and there are no roads so that is a different game that's happening there but when it comes to pakistani hindus this is one issue that we as a country speak up also mm-hmm. in different platforms on human rights and everything because it is very well established mm-hmm. and sindh province our people go through a lot like we have done a research for the policy that we want to introduce that 58% of the girls have never seen education hindu girls have in, never in, been in, in, in sindh province sindh living province. in sindh province you know and over there are different reports starting from 13 girls to 1350 girls that goes missing every year mm. it's 13 or 1350 doesn't matter even if it's one girl it matters for us as you know when one of our women's modesty is tested ramayana and mahabharat happened right so even if it's one girl we should be actually going for standing for them but unfortunately for 70 years we have neglected the community there mm-hmm. you know and then these are mostly scst mm-hmm. uh, brothers and sisters mm-hmm. 90% of them come that comes to bharat or dalits mm-hmm. but no dalit organization in bharat stands for them mm-hmm. our women are being used as a commodity mm-hmm. for conversion in sindh mm-hmm. province but no women organizations once they come to bharat or when they are there comes forward no international organizations comes forward to stand for them because they don't look at them as a dalit or a women or anything in this case you know they look at them as hindu mm. and this is a identity crisis that we are facing mm. so we should not be looking this as a sindhi hindu or a pakistani mm. hindu problem this is a hindu issue because the atrocities that are going on them mm. is happening because of them being a hindu mm. so every hindu should be standing for them mm. on rightfully mm. so this is the trauma that they are going through on every level mm. even if they go to a hotel they have to tell that they are a hindu they will be given a separate plate separate class they have to sit on a separate table eat clean and then go if not they will be punished mm. you know and they they cannot uh, buy anything they and our research very clearly said that 74% of the families mm. or people have felt that they are, they are uh, they are not allowed to start a new business mm. so they cannot thrive as a community they are just remaining poor and then going dirt poor mm. so this is the trauma that our people are going through and uh, as you know it is it is always a uh, little peaceful mm. when someone at least acknowledges them mm. but unfortunately right now they feel no one even talks about us no mm. one even know about it they feel hopeless mm. and the only hope they see is bharat but but can you tell me that means there are two dimensions to this Correct. one uh, when when actual partition happen uh, i know most of them are uh, you know uh, coming from bill to you know valmiki you know okay. there are various uh, castes but why did they choose to stay back there, was there any ideological or 
reasoning to stay back in the partition part that is Pakistan. And two, now because, uh, you know, uh, we are raising this issue even internationally because the entire discussion about CAA is going on. And there are many people who ask, you know, why only Hindus or Sikhs or Jains or uh, Buddhist or Christian and why not Muslims? So how should we, in what is your ground experience uh, 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 tell about the real situation there? So for the first question, mm -hmm. the answer is very simple, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that we have kept them poor mm -hmm. and uneducated for a long time, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we did a research again for policy, mm -hmm. the startling number we got mm -hmm. was 91% of the families mm -hmm. that have come here have said that their grandfathers had mm -hmm. no idea that partition even happened. Oh, so for them, they were actually staying in uni United India. Exactly. Indian. Because even today, mm -hmm. Tarpar Kot district, Umar Kot district has more than 70 to 80% Hindus. Mm -hmm. So for them, that was a Hindu land. Mm -hmm. Which it, sh it should rightfully be. That's a different uh, thing. Mm. You know. So, but they, t they had no idea that partition happened. Mm. Until 1971 war happened. Mm. They were happily coming for marriages and everything to Gujarat and going back. Mm. They were free birds. Mm. So, for them. Even Rajasthan they, border. Rajasthan border everywhere. Yes. In the whole border. Mm. Uh, so, they were coming in and out. So, they had no idea. Mm. So, they did not even understand why should they should move. Mm. They were never educated. Mm. And unfortunately, the educated and the rich community have come off without, you know, uh, with their comforts mm -hmm. and these, these were left mm -hmm. and that is how uh, they remained. So you even today, 91% of the population was not aware that India and Pakistan, two countries came into existence in 1947. Came existence in on religious basis. Okay. So, so they just stay put up mm -hmm. only after 1971 they have realized. Mm -hmm. So whatever happens in Bharat. They are being persecuted for that. Mm -hmm. India wins a cricket match mm -hmm. uh, in a quarter final in 1996. Mm -hmm. Many houses were burnt. Mm -hmm. Yape, 1992, Ram, uh, you know, Babri Masjid is demolished. Mm -hmm. Half of our temples are demolished there. Mm -hmm. And congratulations to you and everyone that mm -hmm. Ram Lalla to aai gaya. Mm -hmm. Abhi Ram Bhaktane ka baki. So that is the first uh, question that you mentioned. And coming to the second one. See, we... Our country, we kind of everyone confuses people mm -hmm. on like because we knew we bind this whole Muslims and Hindus for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to understand that there is something called migrant and there are something called refugees. Mm -hmm. So a Muslim that is coming from Bangladesh or Pakistan into Bharat is coming for a better life mm -hmm. because of the poverty or whatever is happening there. Mm -hmm. So they should be taken under a different law, mm -hmm. just like how we go to US or Australia. We have a different law. But when a refugee goes from Afghanistan or somewhere, they have a different law. But why is West or anyone, all these vested interests, trying to force something that no one on the planet does but Bharat to do it? Mm -hmm. We can decide what we are now. Mm -hmm. We are a powerhouse now. Mm -hmm. right? So migrant and refugee are two different concepts. Mm -hmm. So a Muslim coming from Bharat, uh, Pakistan to Bharat or Bangladesh to Bharat should be, if they are rightfully eligible, mm -hmm. You know, that there is a different law that should go through. Mm -hmm. But a refugee is an individual who is forced out of their country because of war, religious persecution or natural disaster. Mm -hmm. Our people are clearly going through religious persecution. Mm -hmm. So they should be considered as a refugee. Mm -hmm. So that is what, uh, that is wow. They, are, they should be coming into Bharat. Mm -hmm. We should have a refugee law uh, wherein we can rehabilitate our brothers and sisters. And one thing is Ahmadiyya community. Mm -hmm. You know, why is Ahmadiyya community not? Because they are also persecuted. One, we need to understand that Ahmadiyya community is a very different ball game than a Hindu community. One, we are a poor community. Two, Ahmadiyya community have international organizations such as Humanity First and all of them mm -hmm. who are beautifully helping each other to resettle them. Mm -hmm. In case again they want to come, they can apply for SLM and then come to Bharat. They can still come. Mm -hmm. Right. And then also we need to understand that, you know, uh, I'm not trying to blame them today or something, but they are the founding fathers of Pakistan. Pakistan. The idea of Pakistan. You go to, uh, you know, uh, their website, you go anywhere. They clearly say that Ahmadiyya community, that we are proud founding fathers of Pakistan. It's, it's now that the, you know, other sects of Islam are not considered. Not Muslims. considered them, but they are the founding fathers of Pakistan. So they should not be equally looked at, you know, on, on as Indic uh, religions. Now let us come to, I'll, I'll come to the refugee sure. policy later, sure. 
but let us uh, you know focus on the CA part. Sure. Now. Do you, how do you think that the CA uh, is why it is essential and how far this citizenship uh, facilitating citizenship uh, to these uh, communities persecuted communities would help them in you know uh, uh, settling down. Means how, what what is the difference that is that that, that it will make? It will it will make a great difference in terms of peace. Right? Because CAA uh, is not like a completely a new law, you know. It is a that's why it's called amendment. Mm -hmm. Our government is you know very clear, very clever and clear about it. Right? We are calling it as amendment act, starting from Passport Act in 1922 to Foreigner Acts and then uh, you know uh, Citizenship Act in 1955. Mostly between 1920 to 1955, where were the laws created, we are using the same things, and some of them needs amendment. Mm -hmm. And when independence happened, Nehruji or you know everyone have promised very clearly that Hindus or anyone that you know that are there in Pakistan and Bangladesh, if they want to come to Bharat, we are, they can always come and make this their home. No, in, in Nehru Liaquat Pact was Pact actually, was very clearly was there, there, but Pakistan violated that. that that's why you know exactly because we ensure that the minorities Absolutely. here are safe. Absolutely. But there, uh, you know, the, the numbers are dwindling, and Correct. the numbers that you are talking about, Correct. the girls, especially. Correct. Correct. It's it's very uh, you know. Scary. Absolutely. Coming, I'll come to the numbers dwindling part uh, after this, mm -hmm. uh, because that's very important. We need to understand that. But uh, so when they are coming to Bharat, you know, right now under those acts, they are already appealing for citizenship. Mm -hmm. But it is taking at least eleven years, mm -hmm. and then some of most of them I know are over seventeen twenty years. Like for example, in Jammu, mm -hmm. they have come after 1971, there are still uh, no citizenship. Mm -hmm. So the laws are there, but effectively, you know, mm -hmm. applying mm -hmm. it to implementing it to our people is not happening. So making that and concising it to six years or whatever, you know, hopefully in March it comes, uh, praying to Ramji that, you know, he will, you know, get us through that, uh, that, you know, so if it happens, you know, then it may be six years, four, five years, six plus one, seven years. There are different things until the government is going to release. We won't know. So if it happens, that will be great because they know. See, when you have clarity, you are peaceful. Mm. You know, we cannot keep them hanging anymore because they have gone through too much. Mm. So they at least they have a shanti that, okay, che saal mein, you know, uh, I will go through the whole intelligence process, IB process, whatever our country, because what, we should... What are the, you know, problems they find, means, uh, right, from getting visa to come over, or uh, they also uh, illegally migrate, or uh, what kind of documents, I mean, because there will be technicalities involved correct, in this, correct. as you mentioned, correct. intelligence and clearance and all these are one part. Yeah, that is something we should never be compromising mm -hmm. as a country. I, Me as a citizen, mm -hmm. I would never compromise on the security of the country or the economic burden on the country. Mm -hmm. right? So I am never going to ask, we are never going to ask anything like that. So when it comes to, they are coming here, mm -hmm. I proudly say mm -hmm. that Hindus mm -hmm. never, that at least that I know, have ever come illegally and then if they come illegally we are not someone who will even support them mm -hmm. you know we will make sure that you know they will be again going through the process so that they can legally come back so illegally no one comes mm -hmm. so the visa and pa getting a passport itself and then getting a visa in pakistan is a different game altogether uh, we are, in fact i'm working on a book it's going to talk about you know how difficult it is it is journey of somewhere between 3 to 11 12 years mm -hmm. for each family after they decide to come to bharat imagine they decided today that this is too much, we can't handle this anymore, we want to flee to Bharat to be safe. It takes somewhere between 3 to 11, 12 years for them to come to Bharat. So in between, imagine the number of their girls that get kidnapped, so how many of them getting murdered and what all persecution they go through. Right? So this is a, that is a different uh, topic, I mean, this is a very powerful topic to understand. Because getting visa, for example, I'll give you one number, 1150 rupees is the visa cost to apply to Bharat Embassy. You don't even have to go to Bharat Embassy. Actually, you, you, there is no one that is going to even talk to you in Indian Embassy in Islamabad. You have to send it to two different posts. So you just post your documents. You know what is the average money that is happening right now is 24,000 to 25,000 rupees. So when a family is trying to come, that is I'm talking about our average family is 7 to 8, you know, and then at least 2 or 3 families come together, 10, 15 people. Imagine that's like 2 and a half, 3 lakh rupees, which is a big money. If they work hard for a whole wheat harvest station of 10 years, they will hardly get uh, one and a half lakh. Mm -hmm. You know, in their hands in the end. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, pakistani rupee is unfortunately so down mm. uh, that you know now it's 10 lakhs there is like i think some 4 lakhs or 5 lakhs in bharat so it is impossible for them to come mm. so work hard do all of that and then the visa rejections mm. that is something that i wish i can learn more because the information is not available so i would not like to blame anyone on that but i really wish we find a way to give visas to our hindu brothers and sisters at the earliest because especially girl children that is something that we are also up, uh, you know asking in the policy that if there is a girl child under 14 please expedite their visa process because the girl is in danger you know and then family reunification half of the families that are in bharat 70 80% of their half of the family is still in pakistan they are every day on video calls thanks to whatsapp and all of that but they really miss them every time last night uh, you know i i feel proud that even morning when i was coming here they are so loving imagine like for someone who is not their blood i was running from the camp so they understood that i did not eat breakfast so i was sitting and then someone ran and gave me a paratha to eat no and then i go back they make pakoda they make food for me because they know that you know i'm living with them i'm working for them that is how much love they give me imagine how much love and affection they have to their family mm-hmm. and they are separated from that uh, and then they are forever separated so family reunification let us you know make a clear uh, norms that okay who are the people that are here how many of their families are back there and then how we can expedite them to come here so these are things that we need to do mm-hmm. and we need to take so home. you Your 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 organization is running almost ninety two camps. Now. Correct. So what is the modus operandi? How how you know how many volunteers are involved? What is what are the financial provisions and what are the things that you provide them in in these camps? So uh, every camp needs different um, uh, needs uh, because we are not an organization where we think okay we'll just give education and then limit to that. When it comes to the issues of displaced Hindus, we will go all out. We don't choose anything and everything is needed. we will do anything and everything required to fulfill that that is number one and uh, so when we this uh, camps like for example jaisalmer uh, needs water mm-hmm. jaisalmer needs housing mm-hmm. so we work there jaisalmer needs stouts mm-hmm. uh, wherein our women are like walking for 2 to 3 kilometers every day to collect twigs so there we have replaced stouts mm-hmm. and then we have replaced uh, cycles uh, we have given cycles to children because they were walking 6 to 13 kilometers in desert heat mm-hmm. so you know so that they can go faster and come in arunachal we have built lot of schools mm-hmm. every every camp needs different things we have uh, we have blessed with amazing volunteer network mm-hmm. uh, across like for example our whole back end team works from melbourne mm-hmm. uh, you know and us i do yoga workshops mm-hmm. as you mentioned so you know i bend a lot mm-hmm. uh, my yoga workshop is about 2 and 1/2 3 hours mm-hmm. so anyone that came to my workshops you can understand i'm not someone who is telling asana and then repeating it mm-hmm. i am working with them mm-hmm. so there are days i do four sessions in a day like 5 to 8 and then again 8:30 to 11:30 and then again 2:30 to 5:30 and then 6 to 9 in the night like recently i was i've done some of them like that in virginia and atlanta so if i work that hard for like 8 9 10 days with one meal uh, you know i get one camp lights or you know stouser for the one camp so we work really hard mm-hmm. and whatever bhiksha mm-hmm. i get back from yoga workshops i bring it back to serve our people mm-hmm. that is one of the operation and the second thing is of course there are many donors beautiful organizations like idrf mm-hmm. uh, and asha jyoti and all these organizations that have their heart for bharat mm-hmm. so they are also coming forward uh, and then i see very nicely like before uh, only you know like for example asha jyoti example mm-hmm. they are they are a telugu organization so they used to only support andhra but now they are expanding they are they are very happy to support you know any community that is coming from bharat so that way you know they are also expanding their hearts mm-hmm. Uh, so that is how we are working and then most of our volunteers on ground i'm very proud to say that they come from small slums mm-hmm. yeah. uh, so they are all like so what is the number of volunteers we have about 100 150 volunteers 100 oh, i mean we have about 140 volunteers that uh, so they are almost like full time with certain volunteers wherever needed where yeah, yeah yes there are there are and uh, in our organization uh, anyone and everyone salaried is basically from the beneficiary community so like for example in arunachal pradesh we have tarunji mm-hmm. uh, you know every area we have different people like that you know where in uh, they take care of mm-hmm. uh, the camps there mm-hmm. and then we have about 10 13 uh, uh, volunteers mostly from delhi mm-hmm. uh, and also from a few other cities mm-hmm. so every time we execute uh, a project mm-hmm. we are always there so we are never just handing it over mm-hmm. and there is no money transaction in our organization everything has to be like you know directly given with our hands 
So we make sure that everything is transparent like that. Mm -hmm. So that have helped us to build that transparency and also as an organization. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, transparency brings uh, trust also. Absolutely, absolutely yes, absolutely yes. But uh, Kiran, uh, now there is a lot of talk about say, uh, you know, people like Rohingyas. Correct. And uh, we know for sure that you know, even in countries like Indonesia or many other Islamic countries, they are they are not welcomed at all mm -hmm. because they are seen as you know troublemakers even in their own country. Correct. But still in India, there are people who are batting for them, who are fighting for them. And they are coming all up to Jammu or Delhi or Hyderabad and uh, getting Aadhaar cards and you know, this entire... And there, there is an entire lobby that is talking about, you know, Absolutely. Rohingya refugees, Rohingya Absolutely. refugees. In Bangladesh, you know, Bangladesh also has separated them, completely isolated Cox them. And, you know, making it sure that, you know, whenever get a chance, they will be sent back. So, if this is the case, why, you know, uh, always, you know, a, a, a person like Rohingya who is a troublemaker known to be a terrorist in his own country, it's considered as refugees. When it comes to the Hindu cause uh, or Hindu refugees, there are very few human rights organizations or people working on the refugee front or even international agencies working for the refugee issue. They never speak up. Why? Why these double standards? So, what see, is your assessment? See, assessment is this is all about lobbying, ji. Mm -hmm. You know, it is uh, because they have such good lobbying mm -hmm. uh, by Muslim mm -hmm. countries and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and then like for example, let us look at the places mm -hmm. where uh, Rohingyas are being uh, rehabilitated. Let's say in Hyderabad, mm -hmm. you know, it is OIC and his brothers, and they they help each other. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you take silchar in Assam. Mm -hmm. There are people similarly that are helping them mm -hmm. to do it. And it is very startling. Mm -hmm. When I've researched, especially in silchar and West Bengal, mm -hmm. um, I've realized that most Muslims mm -hmm. that come to Bharat mm -hmm. from Bangladesh or Rohingyas also that come from Bangladesh, they already have or within one week, 10 days, they have the whole paperwork with them. Mm -hmm. So they have a network wherein they help each other. Mm -hmm. Whereas our people that come, they come with overconfidence. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I know I have to use that word. Because they think that, okay, ye to Bharat hai, Hindus hai, we will be welcome. Mm -hmm. And then they come and then they realize there is no network for them. There is no system for them. Mm -hmm. you know? So that is how, you know, uh, it, first it happens. Mm -hmm. And other than that, we need to understand that when Rohingyas or even you look at Palestinians and all, they are not allowed uh, into any of the Middle East countries. Right. So, it is very clear even on internationally you look at it that they will fund such a way that they will go to some other area, Canada or Europe and Muslim, you know the Middle East and everyone supports, pulls a fund and then gives it to United Nations or any organizations so that they nicely spread. They know who helped so they have the loyalty and then you are not even keeping it within you. So, they always operate you know in a certain, uh, I, think, I think it is okay because they are helping each other. And I think it is time where we build systems for ourselves and that our country give, build systems ourselves uh, on human rights basis to support Hindus. But you don't believe that, you know, Hindus in, in Pakistan especially or even for that matter mm -hmm. Bangladesh should stay back and as minorities they should get their rights and they should uh, claim and from here we should help them out. That, that is the most ideal situation mm -hmm. but it looks far from reality. Right, because uh, we have no you were power. mentioning about dwindling numbers. Correct, so, so. correct. Yes, see, dwindling numbers are unreal. Like for example, see, we talk about. Let us talk about persecution. Mm. The first thing that comes to our mind is Holocaust, mm. which is absolutely unbelievable that it even happened, uh, where you know six point nine million uh, Jews, brothers, sisters were slaughtered, which is unbelievably dark. Mm. But let us look at our own people. Mm. We are talking about when we look at the percentage of people and the number of people there to now, almost 69 million people are missing. It, they can be converted, they have, so whatever happened, killed, different things happened, right? You know, 69 million people mm -hmm. have ma vanished. Mm -hmm. So that is, oh, this is 10 times bigger than persecution mm -hmm. and no one talks about it. Mm -hmm. The peak of the persecution uh, where, you know, uh, the Hitler have inflicted upon, again, you know, our, our Jewish brothers is, for six to seven years, peak, six, 70 years, mm. 10 times bigger than that. Mm. But there is no place mm. for our people, right? So this shows 
that we need to dynamically work as a community we need to we, sh we should stop to look at this as a pakistan or a hindu problem mm -hmm. and then let it look at us as a hindu identity hindu issue mm -hmm. and then the whole world all the hindus should come together they are in ghana we are in mauritius we are in fiji we are everywhere let us all come together and then work on you know each and every hindu displacement we need to build those systems for the future so what do you propose you know last minute, let us come correct. to the policy that you are talking correct. about correct because we are not signatory to either a protocol or to, correct. you know uh, refugee any of the international conventions correct, correct. so uh, how do you see can india come up with a refugee policy as such specifically meant for uh, uh, hindus uh, uh, who are persecuted in the neighboring areas what kind of policy that you are no can india when we ask that question we can absolutely do anything on the planet right now because we are a great country we are thriving like anything before our intelligence ib or you know any department is stronger than anyone on the planet mm -hmm. so we can definitely build we can filter and then we can definitely take who is supportive to the country and then let them thrive in the country yeah. there is no doubt about it and when it comes to uh, refugee policy like yes we are not a party to the 1951 uh, refugee convention or the 1967 uh, protocol right so hence we do not have a refugee law as such but still we are the one of the largest hosts of refugees on the planet mm -hmm. be it elam tamils or tibetans again but now when it comes to hindus mm -hmm. unfortunately we have never been that you t you look at 1991 in bhutan mm -hmm. where 100000 hindus were asked to leave mm -hmm. overnight not one hindu were able to come into bharat can you believe it you are an international again you know, relations student i'm sure you are aware of this it is unbelievable right 100000 hindus they were not let into bharat mm -hmm. they ended up in nepal and then from nepal united nations supported them through scandinavian organizations mm -hmm. and today the research says that whoever went to scandinavia mm -hmm. have already converted mm -hmm. only people in us and everywhere are thriving because thanks to seva international and you know some of the organizations that have really stood by them mm -hmm. otherwise we have lost majority of the community so similarly here you know so if we do not have a policy we are going to unfortunately lose them the numbers will dwindle forward so what we are asking for is very simple that they are going through religious persecution so they should be considered as a refugee and it is high time where we create our own systems as a country mm -hmm. under that system let us give them a rehabilitation policy a refugee card mm -hmm. you know so once they come to bharat through they have to uh, go to frro Mm -hmm. according to our act mm -hmm. so a foreign regional registration mm -hmm. office they register mm -hmm. so there maybe we can create a system mm -hmm. wherein we give them a refugee card mm -hmm. that we recognize you that you have gone through this mm -hmm. as a religious persecution under that refugee card on humanitarian basis the roti uh, kapda makan that we have been uh, talking about for a long time simple those things are as what we are asking because the first 6 months is the hardest time that our people are going through after mm -hmm. going through so much trauma mm -hmm. they are coming with just 4300 rupees as their final money to bharat mm -hmm. can you imagine 4000 rupees you are holding and then crossing into a country where there is no rehabilitation program for you average family is seven again mm -hmm. right with so much of trauma mm -hmm. and lack of confidence mm -hmm. with whatever they have gone through so their human on humanitarian basis under that card let us give them a rehabilitation program at least 6 months of transit housing i'm not even asking for pro, uh, permanent housing because our community is hard working mm. i have seen many people in jodhpur and everywhere so how much time generally because now you have been working yeah, with them yeah. for a long time so how much time generally they take to settle down and start their own self sufficient living i would say i would i may sound over confident but i would say from day one actually they do i have seen many people even before they put their luggages somewhere they start working okay other than that worst case scenario 3 to 4 months is maximum for them to settle down feel home and then thrive because as i said before i said we work in restoring dignity and fostering resilience why because we don't look at them as victims of religious persecution once they come to bharat we look at them as a thriving community of futures ba atmanirbhar bharat they have that capacity in them example most of our people there do kheti badi mm. they are amazing in farming mm -hmm. and you look at our lands from uh, all the way from gujarat to rajasthan most of the lands are empty there is no one to do those lands imagine if we can do those lands with them you know our country's agriculture growth will happen so many things can happen with that you know and we are not we our country can easily estimate all of that right so on that basis they are not a economic burden so when they are coming 6 months of transit home 
six months of grocery support so that they feel home they feel settled some skill development i know and then let them have education and healthcare and they will assimilate into bharat this is basic what we are asking so so, yeah. so uh, whatever research that you have done Correct. and on the basis of that research that you are proposing this policy is your organization uh, somewhere documented it and putting it for some kind of policy consultation everything we have we have uh, you know a very simple five page refugee policy overview which will have we shall talk about it very precisely to 300 page document so we have done research uh, you know properly which is documented from all the camps all the way from rajkot morbi karnavati uh, ahmedabad uh, mehsana radhanpur uh, jaisalmer jodhpur delhi we have done it all we have gone to each and every camp and we have done research we have the numbers speaking for themselves that our community is not going to be economic burden and then our security agencies are powerful enough Uh, to nullify any uh, you Very know security security issues they can they can take care of that part there is no doubt about it and uh, so we there shouldn't be any doubt uh, to rehabilitate them into bharat and rehabilitating a hindu refugee is a sacred responsibility that we owe to ourselves as well as future generations and most importantly to our ancestors they have sacrificed so much for us to be here mm-hmm. you look at iran mm-hmm. you know our parsi mm-hmm. brothers and sisters it was their home mm-hmm. and today look at them of course they are thriving in bharat and everywhere because they are a hard working community just like our sindhi hindi communities mm-hmm. so it is our sacred responsibility mm-hmm. to safeguard the civilizations that been given out of so many sacrifices so uh, thank you thank you uh, kiran and uh, i'm i'm sure the work that uh, you and your uh, you know project is doing uh, running 92 camps uh, supporting these many people uh, it's not an easy task uh, but but uh, translating in, in, into policy is uh, you know uh, is even more difficult uh, but i hope you know the, the 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 case studies that you are talking about or the documents that you are talking about uh, eventually we will be um, uh, you know we will we'll be able to make it up for you know uh, issues of public discussion and translated into policy document so friends uh, you know uh, we we hear about caa we hear about persecution of hindus in pakistan bangladesh but we don't know the real stories these are the real people who are who are already here half of their family members are still in pakistan uh, their girls are abducted forcefully converted forcefully married so these are the you know uh, issues they face the the discrimination on every day basis on any small incidents we hear the stories of you know oh uh, uh, you know uh, muslims are being persecuted in india or but 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 here is the systemic state sponsored uh, you know uh, uh, a kind of persecution of uh, uh, on on the religious basis and the community which was not even aware that india and pakistan have become two entities in 1947 so around ca uh, you know Uh, this is the work that is uh, happening in the background by people like uh, uh, Kiranji and uh, you know Refugee Aid Project. So we just thought that uh, for the larger understanding and uh, debate, we should uh, you know bring forward these issues related to Hindu refugees who have already migrated and Hindu refugees who are still waiting to migrate. Uh, what what can be the policy formulations what can be the you know real issues that we need to pick up discuss in human rights domain in media uh, discussions it's uh, up to us uh, so hopefully uh, you know uh, uh, as a society we stand by uh, these persecuted communities and also the people like kiri uh, who are who are working for them Uh, thank you thanks again thank you so much for having me here faful ji and uh, the whole team of organizer and for the hindu community we really need to come together because only because a few conditioned minds cannot understand the fact doesn't take the impact of the fact away what is happening to our people is real and we need to stand up for each other and then we should be proud and then let us own this as our own uh, crisis and support and uplift our hindu brothers and sisters that are fleeing sindh province and coming to bharat jai shri ram